XGME released a new beta firmware that is supposed to fix several bugs and also add some new features. So, I decided to make this unscheduled video to keep you updated, just as I promised in my Horizon 20 Max review, for those of you who have read it of course. The new firmware is separated into two parts, a large Google TV system update and a very small file of a few kilobytes for the DMD controller upgrade. I followed XGME instructions and upgraded the projector successfully. So, the whole update process was separated in two stages. First came the big Google TV update, which took around 20 minutes and unfortunately raised everything. It was basically like performing a full factory reset. All my apps and settings were gone. Then I installed the small DMT controller update, which took another 10 minutes. During the DMD update, the cooling fans ran at maximum speed, which was quite loud. I'll start of course with the most important feature of the Horizon 20 Max that urgently needed to be updated. I'm talking of course about the DBLE, the Dynamic Black Level Enhancement, XGME's Dynamic Contrast Algorithm. In the clips you are watching, the top image is a pure neutral projection with dynamic black disabled and the two bottom images are with dynamic black enabled, the left one with the old firmware and the right one with the new one. The first thing you'll notice, just like I did, is that with dynamic black enabled on the new firmware, the white balance of the whole image is no longer affected by the magenta tint like it was with the old one. You can clearly see that on this video. However, I also noticed that the algorithm was become much softer. In many scenes, I wasn't seeing the same contrast and black improvement that I used to with the old firmware. Also, during scene changes, I could sometimes catch the laser power adjustment with my eyes. Dynamic black works instantly frame by frame, but there are still a slight delay of a few milliseconds when the scene changes completely, resulting in a short brightness flash that can sometimes be distracting. Another thing I observed is that in some specific frames, the black level shifted toward a reddish tint. Sometimes it was barely noticeable, other times quite obvious. Here's an example frame so you can see what I mean. Overall, the improvement compared to the completely non-functional dynamic black algorithm of the previous firmware is dramatic. Yes, XGME is on the right path regarding the development and improvement of its dynamic contrast algorithm, that's for sure, but there is still quite a lot of work to be done for DBLE to become fully functional, in my opinion. Next, I wanted to discover how the dynamic black behaves in medium brightness scenes, not just the pure dark ones. Here, the results were not what I expected or wished for. Even though the white balance problem is gone in these scenes too, the black level improvement is minimal, almost unnoticeable, I would say. After multiple tests, I realized that in these semi-bright scenes, where the image isn't fully dark, the dynamic black reduces laser power much more gently, and sometimes not at all. As a result, the black level stays nearly the same as if we don't use the dynamic black and the algorithm mostly makes micro gamma adjustments in order to create a higher contrast image without deeper blacks of course. This is different from the older firmware, where the algorithm was much more aggressive with laser power. You can clearly see that some elements in the image are brighter with dynamic black enabled, but the black levels seem untouched. Another bug fix in this new firmware is the ability to activate the dynamic black in Dolby Vision content, which was missing from the old one. Unfortunately, I tried many times to enable it on Dolby Vision content without success. 
When I activated Dynamic Black before even playing any Dolby Vision content, it immediately turned off as soon as the video started, showing an error on the screen regarding the chosen color space. I went through every color space option available, but it didn't make any difference. When I attempted to enable Dynamic Black while Dolby Vision content was playing, I discovered that it was simply grayed out, and naturally, I couldn't select it or turn it on. I only managed to get it working in Netflix Dolby Vision content and only in a very specific way. I had to enable Dynamic Black before even opening the movie's page. Crazy! Then, once playback started, the Dynamic Black algorithm actually worked. Strange and problematic behavior, but at least this method allowed me to activate Dynamic Black in Dolby Vision content and see how the Ryzen 20 Max performed. I surprisingly found that in Netflix Dolby Vision content, the Dynamic Contrast algorithm performed exceptionally well, I would say even better than in HDR10. I didn't notice any serious issues or artifacts, and the Dynamic Black was working smoothly, with a decent black level reduction and a well-balanced grayscale temperature. However, because I couldn't use my own Dolby Vision test clips that I know in detail, I'm unable to confirm whether this good Dynamic Black behavior is consistent across all Dolby Vision profiles. Another fix, and quite important in my opinion, is that the laser power setting is now fully adjustable in HDR and Dolby Vision content. Previously, let me remind you, it was locked at maximum level. Apart from bug fixes, this new firmware also brought some new features to the Ryzen 20 Max. One of them is a new MMC option which gives native 24Hz playback with no internal conversion. And it works. It works perfectly. The Ryzen 20 Max passed all my 24Hz tests successfully. The Real Cinema 24Hz native playback cannot operate with Dolby Vision content. Every time I turn it on and started a Dolby Vision movie, it would immediately switch off. Another firmware bug, I suppose. Additionally, with HDR10 and HDR10 Plus content using the MMC Real Cinema setting, increases the well-known rainbow effect to the point where even I started noticing it. And I should mention that I'm usually one of the lucky ones who is completely insensitive to this phenomenon. Take a look for yourself in this frame-by-frame -frame sequence and draw your own conclusions. Unfortunately for 3D fans, nothing improved here. Sorry guys. The issue I mentioned clearly in my review is still there. During fast scenes, motion become choppy, like frames are missing and the 3D glasses fall out of sync, causing reduced 3D depth and a feeling of dizziness or eye strain if you watch for more than 5 or 10 minutes. I hope we see improvement in this area in the final film we release, as 3D is very important for many of us, I believe. Overall, my conclusion is that the new firmware for the Ryzen 20 Max brings some useful improvements like proper 24Hz playback, better dynamic black algorithm and several bug fixes like the laser power adjustment on every type of content. As for the dynamic contrast algorithm specifically, I'd say that obviously it's working much better now, but still not 100% ready for serious use in my opinion. XGMI is definitely moving in the right direction. The image with a dynamic black enabled is clearly improved, but it still has many weaknesses, especially compared to the Valerion's near-perfect EBL algorithm. Since this new firmware is still in beta form, this gives XGMI a solid base to continue improving it with feedback from users and reviewers. I hope the final firmware version will bring even greater improvements and additional bug fixes that will make life easier for Horizon 20 Max owners and why not? even happier. I'm Nikos and this was a quick update video on the Ryzen 20 Max newly released firmware. Stay tuned because I promise you, many more interesting videos are coming soon on Projector Junkies.